this is a study of uh, the possibility that a drug which enhances autophagic degradation of the mutant antitrypsin protein could ameliorate the liver disease that's um, associated with that mutant protein. The, um, um, so this is, the, this is a study using an animal model of the classical form of alpha-1 antitrypsin deficiency. Um, it's a, this is a disease that's the most common genetic cause of liver disease in children. It's the most common genetic disease for which children undergo liver transplantation. It also causes chronic liver disease and hepatocellular carcinoma in adults. And it probably is an underappreciated um, for um, uh, how much it affects the adult <coughs> without any history of having been a problem in, in childhood. So there are about 70 people a year who, uh, 70 adults a year who undergo liver transplantation in the United States for this deficiency. The, um, the deficiency um, also is the most common genetic cause of emphysema, or what's also called chronic obstructive pulmonary disease in adults. Um, that doesn't happen in childhood because it takes about 30 to 40 years before the lack of this protein in the blood and in the tissues allows um, destructive enzymes that are made by neutrophils to destroy the connective tissue matrix of the lung. And um, um, that's really, that has been known now since the disease was discovered. It was really initially associated with emphysema in adults. And that's because what happens in the deficiency is there's a point mutation in the protein that prevents the protein from being secreted by the liver cells into the serum so it can go to the various tissues, including the lung. In the lung, what the protein does is to inhibit these destructive neutrophil enzymes. And when it's not present, those destructive neutrophil enzymes can destroy the, elastin, the elastic connective tissue of the lung, and it loses its elastic connective tissue. It becomes emphysematous. That, um, um, although alpha-1 antitrypsin deficiency that's inherited only causes somewhere in the neighborhood of 1 to 2 percent of all chronic obstructive pulmonary disease that occurs in this country, um, it, we now believe over many years that the idea that the lack of antitrypsin can lead to emphysema is the prevailing theory for how emphysema occurs in people who don't have the deficiency. And that's because what was discovered uh, in the 1970s was that when people smoke cigarettes, their uh, neutrophils and their macrophages in their lung get activated by the cigarette smoking. They release oxygen intermediates that inactivate alpha-1 antitrypsin, even though there's enough alpha-1 antitrypsin there in the lung. So what happens in those people is they lose the function of the alpha-1 antitrypsin, and now the neutrophil uh, enzymes can destroy the connective tissue. So the elastase, anti-elastase theory of chronic obstructive pulmonary disease still is still the prevailing theory, and um, and so um, um, that's part of the way we understand how this deficiency works. Now, the liver disease that occurs in people who have this uh, problem occurs for a very different reason. It's not lack of the inhibitor. It's actually that this mutant inhibitor gets stuck in the liver cells. It aggregates. It forms these massive, what are called globules in the liver cells, that injures the liver cells, and the liver responds by what we call scarring, what 
is called medically fibrosis and cirrhosis, is the scarring of the liver. It's a stereotypical response of the liver to however it becomes injured. In this case, the primary injury is this abnormal aggregated protein that accumulates inside the cells. So um, what my lab has done over many years is try to understand um, how, does, how does the liver respond when this aggregated protein, protein accumulates? Is the, are there ways that the liver tries to protect itself? And is that the reason why some deficient people never get any liver disease, which we know from screening studies that have been done in Sweden over the last 40 years, that many people who have alpha-1 antitrypsin deficiency don't seem to get the liver disease. And what we've discovered over the years is that there are pathways within the cells, within the liver cells themselves, that can naturally break down the aggregated alpha-1 antitrypsin. And in fact, one of those pathways, which we have found over the years to be key, is this pathway called autophagy. It's a pathway that lives in the cell, and what it does is it seeks to, it, it functions to actually recognize the aggregated protein or the oxidized protein and encapsulate it in a vesicle, and that vesicle goes to what's called the lysosome. The lysosome is a, um, is a compartment of the cell that has many enzymes to break down um, damaged proteins. So this pathway autophagy lives inside those liver cells, it lives inside all the cells of the body to break down damaged, oxidized, or aggregated proteins. So the idea behind this study was what happens if we actually stimulate that pathway? Can it make the aggregated antitrypsin Z go away? And can it um, then prevent the scarring that occurs? And so the, um, we tested a drug which has been mentioned in the literature to have the effect of stimulating autophagy, even though that drug's main um, purpose has been the treatment of seizures for many, many years. And the drug is called carbamazepine. Its brand name is Tegretol. That, the drug has been used safely in children and adults as an anticonvulsant and as a mood stabilizer for many, many years, and we know that it works well in that capacity and that it has very few side effects. So the idea was if this drug enhanced the disposal of this aggregated protein and prevented the scarring of the liver, it could almost immediately be tried in patients who have this deficiency. And the results of this study showed that um, two weeks of treatment of a mouse that models the disease, there was a marked reduction in the aggregated antitrypsin Z and a marked reduction in the scarring, fibrosis of the liver. Um, so this then um, means that carbamazepine can be tested almost immediately in a clinical trial in patients who have um, liver, chronic liver disease or um, um, any of the complications associated with that. The second important thing about this is that, the, that we believe that this approach to um, uh, alpha-1 antitrypsin deficiency could also be used to, um, as a potential treatment for other diseases that are associated with aggregated proteins because basically this pathway, this autophagy pathway, um, is there inside the cell, every cell. So for instance, Alzheimer's disease or Huntington's disease or Parkinson's disease are all diseases that are sometimes caused by aggregation, aggregated proteins. And we also know that carbamazepine is one of those drugs that passes the blood-brain barrier, one of the big obstacles to new drugs um, for uh, neurological problems is that those drugs may not pass through the blood-brain barrier. This drug is already known to pass the blood-brain barrier. Its main use is against seizures, which occur uh, beyond the blood-brain barrier. So um, this drug becomes a candidate for 
a treatment of neurodegenerative diseases. And I think this um, uh, opens the whole area for looking for other drugs that might affect this pathway in uh, for alpha-1 antitrypsin deficiency or some of these other diseases.